It's been kind of interesting lately. I've been hearing a lot of people telling me all kinds of weird things. You know, like, just commit to the Lord your plans and you get whatever you want. <laughs> it's like, really? Or, if I just have faith, I can do anything I want to. Really? Huh. Sounds a little weird to me. You know, and the more I read some of these things, they make these cute little posters, you know, and they take a part of a scripture, you know, and they, they put in the part they like, and they leave out the part they don't like. I gotta admit, it makes kind of a cute little poster. It makes a nice saying, but it kind of makes me wonder about the part they don't put in. You know, the God part, the part that makes God real, the part that says God is in control. They don't put that part in. You know, they like to put in the faith part or the commit part, or the say it, get it, feel it, do it part, or the as you think, so are you part. But they never put in the part where God is real, that there's a living God, that God actually lives inside me and talks to me, walks with me, and, you know, kind of rearranges my thinking. You know, tries to teach me about stinking thinking that maybe it's kind of heading in the wrong direction and I need to change my thoughts so that they're more like the scriptures, maybe even with the scriptures, so that I don't change the scriptures and try to make them into God as opposed to God being real. Because you see, somebody wrote it. Jesus literally is the physical word of God. He is the embodiment of the Bible. He's, he's God's spoken word, come in the flesh. Now, I don't completely understand that one, but <laughs> God does. So when people make all these cute little sayings and take part of it out, I kind of think of it this way. It's kind of like cutting up Jesus into pieces that you want, you know? They only want a finger, but they don't want his mouth. They only want a toe, but they don't want his head. You know, they only want the good stuff, but they don't want the stuff you have to do to get it. That's kind of what's bugging me about some of these Christian poet posters and poets and ideas and philosophies that are being put out, you know, sometimes good intentions, seems like, you know, it's like, well, they're passing it around, you know, but they forget the part that says, if you take away from the Bible, or you add to the Bible, then all these plagues and everything listed in the book of Revelation would be added to you, or would be put upon you, because well, you know, maybe you better read it for yourself, because <laughs> I sure don't want to interpret it. I sure don't want to want you to mistake what's being said there. But I think you better read it, because whenever you're changing the Word of God into something it doesn't say, you may be putting yourself into the tribulation one day. And if the Bible's accurate, and if it says what it means, it means what it says, then it says it'll be added to you. So, I don't know about all this, you know, hunky-dory, good, goody-goody, we're going to get out of here kind of routine, because part of me says, you know, you kind of need to pray you be counted worthy to be spared of the tribulation period and all these things. I mean, Jesus said it. Paul said it, the book of Revelation says it, so where did everybody get this idea that 
everyone gets a free ride to heaven in the rapture. Now, kind of the parable of the ten virgins, I thought only five were wise. So, everybody's wise? I thought Jesus said we're two would be walking in the field, one should be taken, the other left behind. Yeah, that sounds like 50% to me, man. Yeah, I want to be one of the ones that is kind of gone. I mean, if two are walking together, then I think both of them are Christians, you know? Two will be asleep in bed, one will be taken, the other left behind. Uh, I don't think that sounds like everybody going. I mean, who goes and who doesn't go? I kind of think that in the book of Revelation, you know, there was a letters to seven churches, you know, and, well, one of the churches was told that they're going into great tribulation. Ooh, I don't want to be in that church. <laughs> and only one of the seven was told that they'd be spared. Hmm. Does that mean everybody's in that church? I mean, I've seen some mega churches, but that's got to be one big church. <laughs> so, I guess I kind of need to figure out, you know, what's it all about in that, that kind of being snatched away and taken away and saved from the tribulation period? Is it just a, a free ride and I don't have to do anything? I just have to have faith to go? I just have to believe and look for his coming? I mean, I thought, maybe I'm wrong, but heck, I thought in that parable Jesus taught, there was ten of them looking, you know, and they said, hey, he's coming, he's coming. And they went, oh, cool. You know, and then five said, oh, but we're not ready, let's, let's go get ready. And uh, they took off about the time that the Lord came. And five were ready, and they went in. So I kind of wonder, you know, you really think everybody's going? Really? I don't see anywhere, bluntly, in the Bible that God says everybody's going to be spared the tribulation period. You know, I always love it because people tell me, but, but you don't think God would pour out his wrath upon the church? And I say, well, I don't know that he pours his wrath on the church, but it does say he pours his wrath on the earth. So I don't know where you're going to be. I don't know where the church is going to be, but I can tell you this. Anybody that's on the earth is going to get wrath poured on. And according to the book of Revelation, there's like six or seven of them, maybe six of them, that says, blessed are you if you overcome. And then it kind of talks about later on that, you know, these are they that uh, died in the tribulation period, but they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and they love not their lives even unto death. Seems to me like we're not talking about a partial rapture, but we're talking about God's will. Seems to me like some things are designed by God to do certain functions. Like God wants his bride, whoever they may be, to be in heaven. And God wants his other people to be on earth. And if you've done what he said, then if you're looking for his coming and you've prayed to be counted worthy and you've done the things he said, then I think just like he said it, you know, well, come on in, you know, enter in. Blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. But it seems like there are others that he said, no, you know, you, you, you're not coming. You know, you're going into the tribulation period. And, Blessed are you if you overcome. You know, do these things that I'm telling you to do, and you'll overcome. Huh. Does that mean that a pre-trib, a post-trib, and a mid-trib could all be right, sort of? I mean, maybe they need to change the words around, like, okay, the bride leaves, but people stay. So the bride left, whoever they are. Well, yeah, because if you've ever been to a marriage, there are people that are watching the bride, walk down the aisle and the bridegroom and the bride go off on the honeymoon. What about the rest of the people at the party? Hmm. 
What about the invited people that didn't show up? Hmm. What about people that heard about it, you know, and just kind of talk about it, but they weren't there? I don't know, you know. It seems to me like there's more to this rapture than everybody, just because they want to, get to go. It seems like there must be some kind of criteria, because otherwise... we'd probably be seeing in the Bible this cataclysmic event happening and God would be talking about it. But you know, funny thing is, Jesus talks about the rapture like being some kind of secret thing, almost. Not, not a total secret, but just like if Satan knew that when it was going to be or how it was going to happen, he'd kind of prevent it from happening, you know. And even after it happens, he doesn't say, well, the whole world falls apart because of the rapture. And yet he does describe how the the vials and the you know scrolls and everything else happens. So do you think maybe you know maybe maybe you want to think about it. Do you think maybe that Jesus was kinda of like telling his disciples, look, you see him how the thousands come to me? how everybody wants to be a part of me, everybody wants to follow me, and yet when I tell them certain things, they don't follow me no more. But you, 12, you know, the one of you is going to fall away. It's going to be condemned, you know, sorry. One of you is going to, going to betray me. You think maybe those 11 out of the 70, those 11 out of the 120, maybe those 120 out of the thousands that said they followed him. You think maybe only some of them go? I mean, they all died, you know, obviously. They all died for a witness, you know, because that's what, that's what the Book of Acts shows us. It's what uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs shows us. Kind of sounds like there was a price to pay to follow Jesus. Well, I'm glad that nowadays we don't, you know, have to go through that. We don't have to take up our cross, follow Jesus, <laughs> suffer much, or do we? But I guess my question is: if the rapture is such a perfect event to get everyone out of here. Then why didn't Jesus make that the plan of salvation? How come there's only one letter to one church? How come Paul said, pray to be counted worthy? How come there seems to be so much talk about being counted worthy that we don't have to do anything except accept Jesus? And then obviously we're taken, right? Nothing else got to do, just cruising along. I don't know. It seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but that we're not talking about a rapture that's partial. We're talking about those that are supposed to go, go. Those that aren't going to go, don't. Those that are going to die in the tribulation period, do. And those that are going to be martyred, do. And those that have a purpose, God accomplishes, and God does what he wants to do. And that all the pieces fit if you allow him to put the pieces together and you don't try to invent words like partial rapture, full rapture, everybody goes, some people don't go. But rather you take a lesson from the Bible that if it says in the book of Revelation, you're going into tribulation, then that church is going into tribulation. Simple. It says in the book of Revelation that that church isn't going, they're going. The church says that church is going, they're going. I guess the tricky part is, are you changing the scripture so you fit in? Or are you letting the scripture change you so you go in? I think you may find that interesting. I think you may find that's the difference between knowing who's going and who isn't. 
Looking back, you will see that every step was planned. Leave all to me. Each stone in the mosaic fits into the perfect pattern designed by the master's master artist. It's all so wonderful. But the colors are of heaven's hue so that your eyes could not bear to gaze on the whole until you are beyond the veil. So stone by stone, you see and trust the pattern to the designer. You know, Chuck Smith had a fun way of saying, how do you know you're chosen, and how do you know your free will? Well, your free will on this side of heaven says, on the doorway, free will. On the other side, it says chosen. So when you get to heaven, you look back and you say, I was chosen. When you're standing on earth, you say, I had free will. <laughs> I like that, because it's kind of the same way with the rapture. How do you know who's going in the rapture? Well, when you're raptured, you know. You win. <laughs> Till then, you don't know. Sorry, but you look for it's coming. You look for what the Lord is telling you to do. Because, you see, God never said, I've given you the gospel so that you can believe in the rapture. No, he said, I want you to go do what I told you to do, and then if you're doing it, I'll rapture you. I'll save you. I'll snatch you away from the things that are coming upon the world to judge the world, to try men's soul, to put them through such a time of judgment and such a time of turmoil that even men's hearts would fail them, you know, and, and Jesus warned, you know, his people about that and that if he so does so with his chosen people, then why would he not have some who maybe he wants, maybe designed, maybe left behind for a reason, maybe you're going to find yourself left behind, and if you are, don't lose it. Don't lose your cookies, because maybe when you get to heaven, if you died as a martyr, and you looked on one side of the door, you said, left behind, the other side of the door said, my plan. Is that such a bad thing? <laughs> well, you know, I pray you be counted worthy, but if you're not, hey, there's always God's plan. And it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. And if God wants you to be where he wants you to be, then I don't care what you do. You're going to go through what you need to go through in order to get there. Either now, later, or whenever. So really, it's not a fearful thing to, to be left behind or be raptured. Neither one. What's fearful is to fall in the hands of a living God and to not be in his will. Then you need to be terrified because you haven't done what God told you to do. So today, don't look at this side of heaven and try to interpret that side of it. Don't look at this side of God's plan without being sitting at his right hand knowing what he says is true. But what we see on earth is only partial according to what we do, because God can't reveal to us the entire full picture, because, frankly, we don't have brain capacity. But God can show you today what to do as you walk in His way, as you walk in His will, and as you do the things He said. Because if you do, you don't got to worry about if you're going. You'll be gone. But if you're worried about, you know, this partial rapture or this full rapture, well, the only thing I can tell you is that's not partial, but there are some that are left behind. And so, don't be one of them. <laughs> it's that simple.